This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to compare a Dell Precision T5820 workstation versus an HP Z600 workstation in a gaming environment. Uh, so we've had quite a few requests from our community members uh, to test a current workstation versus a legacy workstation to see if it's worth the extra investment and faster IO speeds on the current workstations. Um, so what we did is we installed a GTX 1660 Ti in each system, as well as a Samsung Evo 970 500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive in each system uh, to just check and see if there were any bottlenecking issues that we see uh, with the legacy versus the current workstation. Um, so if you've never been to greenpcgamers.com, you should definitely check that out. In the description of this video, we're going to post a couple of links, uh, one to our HP Z600 gaming computer blog page and one to our T5820 gaming computer blog page. Um, you can use these pages to upgrade your workstations um, to optimize them for gaming or other high-end computing. Um, so all the information is free. Uh, we go through all the components and show you the high-end components that those systems support. Uh, so check those pages out and use it as a free resource. All right, so how old are these systems. Now, we don't know exactly how old they are, so we made an educated guess based off of uh, the processors that they support. So we looked up the Xeon Quad-Core E5502 processor on Intel's website. Uh, they say it was released quarter one of 09. So we're just assuming uh, that the HP Z600 was released sometime uh, between 2008 and 2009. If you know the answer to that question, uh, feel free to comment below. We'd love to know uh, the exact release date. Uh, the T5820, based off of the Xeon Quad-Core W2125 processor, Intel says that was released quarter three of 17. So we're just guessing that the T5820 was released uh, in 2016 or 2017. Um, again, if you know the exact release date, feel free to comment below. Let us know when it was. Um, so these systems are about 8 to 10 years uh, difference. So um, that's a pretty good age range for us, um, you know, to see if there's any bottlenecking issues. Um, so um, let's continue on and take a look at uh, the specs. Um, so you may want to pause this page a little bit longer. Um, uh, but we're going to show you the specs that we have installed in each system. Obviously, the procs and memory are different, um, but the key components that we installed that are the same are the Samsung Evo 970 500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive, and then the EVGA NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti XC graphics card. So we install the same components as far as the NVMe and the 1660 Ti so we can get some accurate test results. All right, so we're going to start off by doing or showing you our graph on the processor. So uh, what's interesting is we actually have two CPUs on the Z600 and the single quad core uh, Xeon processor on the T5820 still still has a higher percentile. Um, so you can pause this page, um, look at it a little bit closer. Um, we show the actual like what tests it runs on the top right here. So next, we're going to show you the memory benchmark that we ran. Um, and these tests were courtesy of CPUbenchmark.net. Um, so if you want to test your system, go and check out their page, download their benchmark tools. It's pretty useful. Um, so the memory, um, obviously the T5820, it's DDR4 based versus the HPZ600, which is DDR3 based. Um, and we had much higher scores on our T5820. Um, so um, in a gaming environment, you know, all the speed that you can get, you know, it's all going to help. All right, so this is the NVMe to two solid state drive test. Now, this is the same drive that we installed in each system. So if you look up here, the HBZ600, our max write speed was 1.19 gig, max read was 1.46 gig, and then our T5820 here, uh, pretty significant increase in speed, um, 2.33 gig max write and 3.02 gig max read. Um, so that's pretty awesome results on the T5820. So that's going to allow you to open up your large games, uh, programs, files uh, faster, you know, than a conventional SATA or, um, you know, regular solid state drive. So either way, I mean, if you put an NVMe that drive, NVMe that two solid state drive and an HPZ 600 or a T5820, it's going to be a big increase in throughput compared to a conventional drive. So, uh, but those are the differences. You get quite a bit faster speeds on the same drive with the T5820. All right, so here's what's really interesting. We ran a Furmark GPU benchmark, and this is supposed to simulate like an optimized gaming environment. Now, if you look at the results, 
they're almost identical. So we didn't really see much for bottlenecking on the actual graphics card. Um, so that's really interesting. Uh, we did game with the systems too. Um, as far as actual gameplay, I mean, it was, it was, it was very hard to tell a difference when it came to frame rates. Um, so we ran one more benchmark through a game called Tom Clancy's The Division. Um, and then we actually saw higher frames on 1440 uh, than we did on, on the Furmark benchmark. So that's, this is a real gaming environment. Um, so 1440, Z670 70 frames per second, and the T5820 was only three more frames of the same graphics card. So I don't know. If you look at the results, um, you probably will stick, you know, if, if you're buying a system, you, you probably stick with the Z600 as far as bang for your buck when it comes to the actual frame rates on these systems. So um, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, if it was, please consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.